I am so excited. Have I got a treat for you today? I am here in the lovely showrooms of Clive Daniel Home here in Sarasota, Florida. And I have a special guest joining me here today from Clive Daniel Home, our lead designer, Q McDonald. So if this is something of interest to you, please stick around for more of the details. Hi, I'm JJ Williams from Michael Saunders and & Company, and on this channel, Living in Lakewood Ranch, we talk about all things Lakewood Ranch and the surrounding areas, and today is a very special day for me. I am here at Clive Daniel Homes, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Q McDonald. Thank you for sitting with me today, Q. Thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> so Q is a lead designer here at Clive Daniel Homes, and Clive Daniel is a... Uh, a home design and uh, decor uh, specialty uh, establishment here and we are very fortunate to have them here in this community. They have uh, locations in Boca Raton and Naples and now here in Sarasota and we are uh, right off of uh, on the north side of Fruitville Road on the Lakewood Ranch side of I-75. So the location is fantastic for all Lakewood Ranch and also Sarasota, yeah, we got uh, a very thoughtfully done, mm -hmm. yep, yep, and just well needed in this area to have a wonderful company like this. But the reason I came to you is because the conversation I have all the time is, what's trending? Right. What are the colors? What are kitchens like? And so I thought, let me ask a specialist. <laughs> got so it. I'm so glad that you are available, and you are a specialist. Yes. So Q. Um, before we get started on the trends, can you tell me a little bit about this wonderful company that we are here of sitting course, in their showroom? So uh, Clive and Daniel Lubner are a father and son team. Uh, they originally immigrated from South Africa. They have been in Florida since the, the mid-70s. Oh. And um, they are, Clive particularly, is a design, um, I would say a design vanguard. He has is has an eye uh, for purchasing, for, for merchandising products in a really beautiful way. And you've seen that as you've taken a look at our, our showroom floor. Uh, Clive and Daniel uh, have been bringing design at a high level to Florida for the last 12 years um, in this current iteration. And uh, I, was, I was excited to hear that they were on their way to Sarasota, so I, I started working with them as soon as I could. We have a 70,000 square foot showroom um, with uh, vignettes like this one that we're in right here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got three kitchens. We have a cafe that we serve coffee and champagne as, uh, as our guests come in. And, uh, and we want everybody to feel really welcome here. We want everybody to come in and actually sit down on our furniture. And uh, we also, in addition to the showroom, we are a complete design firm. We have the ability to remodel a kitchen. Uh, we do window treatments and wallpapers and everything. Everything. I had no idea. I really thought this was a furniture showroom store until I came in, and it is an amazing experience. I felt so warm and welcome here, and yes, <laughs> lovely refreshments and so much um, expertise here. So um, when I asked you about what's trending, the conversation quickly went to kitchens. Right. Always to the kitchens, yes. am I right? Yeah, Why kitchens, is that? Uh, kitchens are huge. I think, um, you know, it was maybe 20, 25 years ago when we all kind of realized that we didn't want to hide the kitchen anymore, right? And so many of us knocked out a wall or, or removed something and put an island in because the kitchen became the center, the center of the hearth of a home. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that we continue to see that as kitchens get bigger, as more people um, enjoy cooking, is more um, as as cooking becomes more and more popular, yeah. it becomes more popular to be able to see the view of your yeah. home from the kitchen. Whether you want to look out on a pool, whether you want to look into the living room, yeah. whether you want to be able to see the beautiful uh, vistas that you have outside of your windows, and so yeah, kitchens continue to be a, a very big big topic. And open kitchens, apparently, they're here to stay. Yeah, they're here to yeah. stay, and it is true that. And I welcome you... that. <laughs> so do I. And when you when you are having your friends and family over, it really is always about about the kitchen we and do. now it we makes do it always so much end up in the kitchen together don't we absolutely <laughs> yes yes so specifically about the kitchens we have been seeing white cabinets for quite a while now they're crisp and they're just beautiful and they're easy to decorate around you know um, are these something that we're going to still see and uh, this is really the the biggest question that i get in right my right i mean i think white 
a, especially a white kitchen is timeless. I think that's always going to be something that's sticking around. Um, I think the crispness works. I think the idea of using it with, uh, with our coastal aesthetic here works really well. If there is a change, I would say that the change is moving away from maybe the starkness of white and moving towards a little bit of an off-white. Uh, oh, the, okay. the kitchen in our cafe that I'll take you to in a little bit uses a product called Keenon. Keenon is a uh, locally made product. It's actually out of Boynton Beach, Florida, and it is a resin with uh, metallic and pigments added to it. There's a high level of artistry in it. Mm. And uh, what we're seeing a lot of is a neutral, maybe a, maybe a beige, but that beige has a lot of striation or pattern in it. And then, as, as usual, we're seeing an island that can be contrasted. Uh, and those contrast colors are tending to change. We're starting to see a lot of beautiful blues, mm -hmm. a lot of dark blues, and some greens. Oh, yeah, all the beautiful coastal colors. You know, it's kind of interesting. I was just thinking as you were talking about the history of kitchens where, you know, now we are very comfortable with the open kitchen. And now it sounds like the cabinets are going to become a statement in themselves, very artistic. Yes, yes absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, the, a lot of the products that we carry are very artistic. Uh -huh. uh, we're definitely getting a little bit away from, you know, the shaker style cabinets. Oh, okay. They are always going to be in style, mm -hmm. but we want to offer other options. And especially in a, in a condo or in a home where you do have that kitchen does become a really big um, an accent in that room. Yeah. We want to be able to put color and put some texture in there. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, the other uh, question that I get pretty much every day is we've been seeing the gray trend for several years now. Yes. Again, I love that trend. It's crisp and clean, easy to work around. Are we going to continue to see gray? Yeah, I think gray's not going away. Okay. Um, what I think I'm seeing is the maybe the 50 shades of gray. Is, <laughs> is the, the layering of gray on gray is starting yeah. to go away. Yeah. And what I think about that is positive about that is what that means is your your lovely piece that you that you bought recently. Yeah. It doesn't have to go away. Um, don't be afraid to mix in other neutrals and to mix in some beautiful natural woods. Uh, grays and beiges and natural woods are what I'm seeing in our and as our in our design future. Kind of, um, kind of warming up the gray yes. a little bit. Warming oh, it up and layering it gives yeah. an idea, a sense of home, a sense of coziness to it as well. Taking away a little bit of that chill. Yeah, and <clears throat> so yeah, that's kind of interesting. Layering or blending neutrals together. I think that that would be a little bit of a design challenge. I, yeah, it yeah, is something that's some a little practice. bit. It does. It takes some practice. <laughs> it takes a good eye. What I would say is, um, you know, shop take the time, bring a sample of what you're working with if you can, and um, it, it, look at undertones. When you see them together, you'll know that they work together when you, when you put them in front of your face, and that's the way to do it. And, and like I said, I think that it's layering in brings coziness, so it's okay if it feels like you live in this house. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily turn everything into a show house. Yeah. Enjoy your own home. Yes, oh, I love that. It is really true because I do feel like we uh, are uh, feeling like all of our homes have to be a, a model. Yes. Um, but which also brings me to another challenge that I see a lot. So in Florida, a lot of our new residents are coming from out of state. And up they north, have their, yes. Yes. And they have their treasured pieces from, uh, from up north. You have uh, grandfather clocks, pianos, just these lovely pieces that make the house a home. Right. Um, and they don't want to get rid of that, but they also want to have this nice modern look. So is this something that is a challenge that you see or something that you do? Yeah, the way I look at it is it's, it's just simply a design challenge. The way that I would go into that is to create a list of the items and okay. uh, whether you do it in real life or whether you do it in your head um, and kind of create a list of things that you absolutely will not part with. Um, maybe make a, a B list of some things that you're on the fence about, and then maybe make a C list of some things that can definitely go away and you, you would be probably, okay with it. You should probably make that list before you move. <laughs> yes, you should make that, yes, th that's a good idea. If you haven't done that, that's okay. What I mm -hmm. will say is make that list and, and communicate that to your designer. Yeah. Um, if you start that way, then you will be able to, um, the designer will be able to view it as a challenge, start with those items in the beginning. Yeah. And so many of those items are timeless. Like you mentioned a piano. Yeah. A piano is not going to be something that's ever going to not be on trend. Yeah. So any design 
designer should be able to work that into your into your home. Yeah, you know, uh, it is uh, an interesting process though. Like that, uh, I love that idea of making a list. For me personally, I'd make a paper list uh, where I could, you know, do a little. It feels good to cross things off, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of thing. So, well, if if I was coming to Florida, I would want to contact you earlier rather than later to start like. You know, it's so much easier to make a plan, you know, to call you and say, Q, I, I'm moving here and, and this is where I am. And, you know, maybe I can send you some pictures. I don't know. I'm sure you have a whole yes, process. Yes, no, absolutely. And sending pictures is a really big thing. Um, yeah. What I'd like to say is uh, there's a lot of people that aren't really super interested in social media. I love the idea of using social media, using actual pictures, putting together a mood board, however it is that you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And then that's another form of communication with your designer. If you can say, hey, these, these photos inspire me. Yeah. They're, not po they're not photos of yeah. my home, but yeah. I like this look. Yeah. Can you give me something like that? Yeah. That gives us something to work with and makes our job a lot more fun. You know, it's actually so nice to talk to somebody who really, this is your arena, this is what you do. And, um, you know, Every day. we're all homeowners and, and we love to set up our homes the way we like it. But it is so nice to talk to somebody who just really hones in on, here's solutions to what your challenges are. I've seen it before and I can help you and I can make it beautiful and, you know, make it you, like your personality. Yeah, I think that's a really big part. And I don't, if you've never worked with an interior designer before, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. you, you, you question whether the home's going to look like that interior designer's home instead of yours. Oh, yeah, yeah. The way we do it, the way I do it personally, but the, uh, the way all of us at Clive Daniel do is we want to find, we want to find the products that are good for you. We want to bring the design that's going to speak to you yeah. and the communication back and forth and yeah. finding the product that's right, finding the design that's right yeah. for that customer yeah. is our absolute goal. Oh, I love that. That's so, that's just, I'm excited about it. Uh, I am currently building a house. <laughs> you and I are going to be spending a little bit more time together. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Before I let you go, yes. can I ask you one other big challenge that I know, I, I'm sure you see this all the time, okay. is um, this area has so many beautiful Tuscan style homes. Yes. And that style is beautiful, but to have a more contemporary feel, I'm sure this is another challenge that you see a lot. Yeah, we refer to that as detuscanizing. <laughs> right. um, and it is absolutely something we do quite a bit of. And it, depending on how far you want to go with it, how yeah. much money you're ready to spend, yeah. there are some options. Obviously, we can we can tear down all your plaster and we can smooth your walls and start over. Uh, but that's that's a big uh, that's a big prospect. Yeah. One of the things that I like to look at is um, Addison Meisner is an um, architect that was very popular in, around the turn of the century in on the east coast of Florida. Uh, he did a lot of work in West Palm and a lot of work in Boca Raton. If you've been to Meisner Park, it's a it's an, an area that's named after him. What he did was he did a lot of um, of traditional style. Um, that was very similar to Tuscan. He used the red roofs, he used the uh, wrought iron details, mm -hmm. but instead of doing the bright orange colors, he worked with limestone. So having beige walls, having neutral walls, takes away a little bit of that brightness of that color. So if yeah. you've got an orange house yeah. and you've got a red roof, mm -hmm. that red roof is timeless. Yes. Painting that house a, a neutral color, mm -hmm. um, highlighting those iron details that you have is a really good way, a good start towards detuscanization. And then I would say, um, pare, pare down. You know, you most likely have a lot of uh, a lot of accessories. Yeah, it's a Remo very kind of like a like a you know almost like a busy. There's a lot of detail. It is. It is. There's a lot of yeah. detail. Uh, there's a lot of accessories involved in it. Yeah. If you could pare down some of those accessories yeah. and and paint your walls Less a neutral is color. More. It, it gets you to the place where you can you can have a more clear vision as to what you want to do with your home. So that's yeah. the that would yeah. be the the kind of DIY uh, solution. Yeah. And if you're interested in more of the more of a solution, then we obviously have the ability to go as far as you'd like to go. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's some good tips. I mean, it's things. Obviously, it's logical. You know, less is more, and you know, highlight those the nicest pieces. You know. Um, but, you know, when it comes from a professional, it, it just sounds different. Yeah, I, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I, I, I like to look at it like it's, it's, it's finding someone who did it right in the past, finding inspiration. Yeah. And, uh, and we like to say that inspiration starts here, yeah. uh, here at Clive Daniel. But yeah. the reality is you can find inspiration in a lot of places. You can find inspiration on YouTube. And yeah. so that's where, uh, find that inspiration, find so. something that you like, <laughs> and, and then we can work from there. All right. Well, wonderful, wonderful. So um, thank you. 
thank you for your time. It is such a pleasure to sit here with you, to get to know Clive Daniel Home, and um, just to be a part of this wonderful experience. Thank, thank you. you. I really want you and everyone that comes in here to be, feel very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So come in and actually sit down on these couches. Yes. And do me a favor, let's go grab a glass of champagne. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I'm so excited that I was able to sit with Q here at Clive Daniel Home. And I'm going to put a link in the description below if you want to reach out to Q directly. I can tell you he is such a pleasure. And uh, I know that you would enjoy talking to him as much as I have. Thank you again for joining me. J.J. Williams, Michael Saunders and Company. porcelain they won't replace it they'll they'll put it back together but they use gold and the oh. gold fills in the cracks and the idea is that they're actually kind of uh, let's say uh, like embracing the the, the imperfection oh, and it's, so it's cool. kind of an idea for it's kind of an idea for for us as humans you know we're all imperfect we all make mistakes the idea yeah. is instead of hiding those imperfections what if we just embrace the fact that we were imperfect and Kintsugi kind of speaks to that oh my god that is the coolest I love Twirl it. okay got it should I be looking at it yeah <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> Long release, you know, separate fabrication. Yeah, you need a big dining room to have a round yeah, table. Yeah, you do. <laughs>